Welcome back, folks. You're watching part 13 of Tour 2. Let's play with some spider extermination at the very beginning with the flamethrower uh, and also a plasma rifle, I believe. Uh, so, a little bit of that digression aside. So, this is actually uh, take two of this part because I didn't really like the way uh, the audio sounded in the last part. So, let's see if we can make it sound better, shall we? I mean, you won't know that first part, but I will. <laughs> Anyways, this is my least favorite part of the layer of blind ones because of this. Torpedo Not because of the torpedo launcher. <laughs> Um, torpedo launcher makes the part a little bit more bearable, but the underwater section right here is my least favorite part because it's very labyrinthian. Uh, at the very beginning, you can only turn right right here. Uh, to open that underwater gate, we have to go this way and hit a switch. And then we're going to go back and go through that, um, that gated section. And really, uh, it, it's very dangerous to spend a lot of time under the water here. Um, and there's going to be leapers, there's going to be raptoids and all that stuff. Uh, dangerous stuff that's underwater because really the weapons you have underwater unless it's the war blade uh, it's kind of really hard to hit underwater enemies I'm sure you've seen that but uh, we hit the uh, switch here it'll open the underwater gate here and one interesting thing about the torpedo launcher you want to use it more as a mobility device than a instrument of destruction as you see there, it's really hard to hit the enemies here um, the more interesting how how's Joshua yelling or maybe it's just a mental uh, yell but anyways I digress so go this way that you saw me going and we're gonna hit our switch and I believe we're gonna get a thermal charge right here or satchel charge whatever you want to call it and uh, you have to go to the thermal vent chamber to get a key to progress to a level so you kind of have to get the satchel charge uh, you can't really miss it uh, so Unless you choose, like, hit the switch and go back the other way and just ignore it. Um, but really, um, you have to take out the thermal vent, um, or at least go to that area, and then get the door key that's over there. And this little area with the torpedoes and the, you know, the pretty uh, seawater, like, you know, underwater fauna and flora right there. Um, thank you, Adon. Uh, that's going to act as a sort of hub. Uh, sort so if you go this way this is actually the way we don't want to go just yet uh, if you get to this portal right here and there's barrels you've gone the wrong way that's the way to progress the level once you get the door key but we haven't gotten the door key yet so we got to go back and get the uh, door key so not that way and really there's only two uh, I want to say exits in that thinner hub with the, the, the underwater flowers you know plants whatever it's that one that we just passed, and then the one we want to go. Uh, so, thank you once again, Adon. Um, and then there's air pockets here that you can go just in case uh, you might drown. So, as I said before, I think in the previous part, when Adon says your oxygen is dangerously low, uh, I would say you have about, oh, I don't know, about a good five, maybe ten seconds max to find an air pocket or to get out of the water. Well, I guess finding an air pocket is the same as getting out of the water temporarily but um, you want to be kind of speedy here um, because again there's enemies here um, it's really really hard to take out so make sure that you are very quick with it this is the way right here to get this is the way the way to uh, get to the uh, thermal vent chamber so make sure you go this way and then we're gonna hit the switch is gonna open up the thermal vent chamber and the key is at the very top where the oh my goodness that that breathing does not ever get on and never it never ever gets not annoying anyways uh, so we want to get up there and we want to blow up the the uh, big boulders above there and then we want to get the door key and then we want to get the heck out of here because that breathing gets so annoying that's literally that's my that's my second uh, and most hated thing this level is that breathing I love the design of the blind ones but my goodness that 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 breathing uh, can't stand it and here I'm thinking to myself uh, I'm holding this charge for very long kind of want to make it useful and not waste it so I'm trying to find a, a blind one to shoot but uh, I'm going to go in the portal and I'm gonna miss one shot here with the rap rap toid but I'm gonna miss two shots and get the third one um, Anyways, we got the door key, so now we can actually get out of here. So, we're going to go back in the water. We're going to find that other exit. The one with the barrels of the fed earlier. And so we're going to go in there. 
And we should get out of here really quickly, if I remember watching myself play this earlier. So, continue here. Go up through here, and then we're, it's a very long passage, but if you just follow the way I'm going, which, you know, this was a nightmare in the Nintendo 64 version. I feel like the lighting was so much more horrible, and then also the probably my TV at the time, too, but the, uh, the remastered so much more better. I cannot... I cannot understate how appreciative I am for Night Dive Studios to make this look so much more better. Um, but yeah, I digress. So take out this blind sentinel and then use something more stronger than a pistol uh, or a Mag 60. Mag 60 I guess is as good as you can hit their body, but uh, explosive shells, tech arrows, even a flamethrower would be better. So we're going to fight these Nala's. Um, I'm going to use the shredder, but I feel like tech arrows would be a lot better because the explosion, they tend to get really close to each other. But if you can hit them with the shotgun, with the shredder, then shotgun shells with the shredder, you'll be in a pretty good spot. And speaking of tech arrows, we're going to be gifted a tech bow. Tech bow. Sniper capability enabled. Thank you very much, Adon. That's not, that's not like that's the 20th tech bow I've gotten. I didn't know I had sniper capabilities enabled. Uh, so we're going to pick out that, that blind one. And we're going to take out... The uh, blind guardian that's coming up here uh, with a very explosive trinket, and he's gonna go boom, as I said. So go down here, and there's two ways to get well, not two ways, but there's two ways you can progress to this section. One is the exit, and the other one is to get into the flesh eater portal. And of course, we're gonna get the flesh eater portal because we're gonna assemble the nuke at the end of the game. So you're gonna go down here. And you get down here, there is some platforms that are lifts. When you jump on the little wooden beam that's on it, you'll go up and get all twirly bobbed as you go up. And um, that's the way to exit, but we're not going to go that way. We're going to go down to the very bottom and go through the cave system to get to the flesh portal. And of course, hit the switch to access the flesh portal. So, oh my goodness. <laughs> I really, really hate that that breathing sound effect. But uh, take the blind sentinel right there. There's going to be some. I believe there's going to be a blind guardian here that's going to summon a uh, fire fireworms. I believe that's what they're called. Uh, so, yeah, I can hear them right there. Right there. Okay. Um, and there's going to be a spider in the cave. That's right here. I'm going to also be introduced to a new enemy type, the fireborn, which is basically a uh, lava painted colored entrail that is really really quick but uh, lacks the, the the gauntlet that shoots uh, that purple plasma um, it can still chunk grenades it can still swipe at you and I feel like they have a little bit better evasion because they kind of do this like Muhammad Ali boxing uh, stance as they run or jump around uh, but otherwise they're not very threatening and they're uh, their mutilation animations kind of interesting because you can blow them up and the only thing that's left is their little feet and their nubs uh, so you know it's right right here Boop. and the feet just like twitch out of the way it's kind of morbid but you know i thought that was one of the more interesting um you know mutilation um animations for an enemy really 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 up there with the lord of flesh and then the juggernauts uh, but I dare. So that was me showing you the uh, Heart of Fire Talisman power. You can jump in the lava and not take any damage. So if you didn't have it, you'd have to go this way and then get ambushed by a Fireborn. But uh, luckily, you know, we had it. So we could actually just walk through the lava and not worry about it. And that's about it. That's really the only use that the Heart of Fire Talisman really has. Um, not very useful. You don't need it to get a Primogen Key, but, you know, it lets you get some goodies in this level you wouldn't otherwise get. But there, that's just all it is. It's just goodies in, in the form of ammo. Got yeah, the Fireborn here. We're going to continue on. But I do really, I really do like the Fire Caves and the Lair of Blind Ones. It's a, different, it's a different aesthetic compared to what the rest of the level is. Like the, I feel like the first half of the level is literally just cave. Uh, just caves, caves, caves with a aqueduct system where we get this, you know, underground volcano look. And that's what I was, well, I was saying in, uh, I believe, uh, Water by the River Souls. 
um, where the port of Aldia, uh, slaughtered by River Souls, and even the Death Marshes, because you feel like you're in, uh, infiltrating like a military compound of the Perlin. Um, but Portal levels four, activate. five, and six, uh, five suffers from this the most, I feel. But level four, um, you get, you know, cave system. Um, trying to imp infiltrate the cave system at the very beginning, and then you get the underwater aqueduct system, which, you know, it's for the second and the third part, and then you get this lava section, which I really do like. It's different, and then we get into this, like, um, darker crystalline section that's at the very end, but, yeah, they, they tend to look pretty much the same going forward, the levels. Um, and then we're also going to get a new weapon here called the Sunfire Pod, which is a hit. It's only really useful against the blind ones. Otherwise, you kind of just like flash bang the enemy and they're like just looking at you like what the heck just happened and you can get a free headshot. But let's go into the uh, flesh portal right here. Do, 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 do. And what you want to do is you want to go into the this section right here and you go approach the door. And then you're gonna initiate the battle with the flesh eater sentinels right here. You're gonna have to take them all out. So make sure you take them all out. And there's gonna be two death guards that's gonna be in that circular door that we just opened. One's at the base. And then you can, if you're very careful, you can crouch and knife them. And then you just pop them in the head and then gone. The other one is in the very back of the second floor area. So make sure you have something pretty dangerous to shoot at him. Uh, not a plasma rifle or a max, just use explosive shells or tech arrows. He's in the very back. Um, and no amount of crouches is going to keep him from like, not noticing. So you can use a charge drop rifle. Um, and then you can combine it with a max 60 or use something more precision like. But if you don't want to use a charge drop rifle, just use something close. And I really do feel that the charge drop rifle is one of the more underappreciated weapons, in my opinion. Um, but it's much better than tranquilizing them. I mean, you can shoot them and then stun them and then switch to a better weapon and pop them in the head. So, awesome weapon. So we're going to go to the left here. And we're going to be put into a Thunder Dome of sorts with two uh, fleshier Sentinels and two Death Guards. So what I do is I just go ham with the uh, Tech Bow and just start spraying these explosive arrows everywhere. And um, a lot of ammo regenerates here along with health, so you can, you can spend some time here re uh re-equip yourself heal yourself all that stuff and i'm going to do that and i made a little bit of a boo-boo here and i grabbed the new part uh while um i turned off the record because normally when i do these sequences now i just i just turn off the record and, and then i go to farm and then i pick back up it's a bad habit i shouldn't do that but i grabbed the nuke part there's no more enemies after that i don't think uh because there's no bodies left uh, but so we got the nuke part we're gonna get out of here we're gonna finish off this part we got about Oh, I don't know. Um, about a minute left in the part, so we're gonna drop down here, and then we're gonna go climb back up. And we're actually no, we're not gonna climb back up. We're gonna jump on these lifts. Sorry, I was thinking about the lifts were up there, but they're actually all the way down here. So jump on these platforms, trying to get dizzy. I remember getting dizzy on this motion sickness one. I was much younger. Um, jump on here, and then just keep going up. There's four platforms and jump in this little hole right here and we can continue on and be finished with this part um there'll be some worms and spiders i believe uh maybe one or two more blind one enemies a sentinel maybe a guard i think that's that here's that breathing motion uh breathe motion breathing sound i know all too well pop them get a little flow and then we can continue on oh there's blind guardian all the way over there so he wants to trade uh, attacks with me, so we're going to trade attacks with him. Boop. And boom. Done. Okay. And we're pretty much done. So grab the health and life force there if you want. And just continue on. There might be a few enemies here, but at the end of the hall there's a hole. And we're going to call this a part. So y'all have a good one. And hopefully this part turns out better than the last one. Bye.